console for this review was provided by PlayStation. The PlayStation 5 is finally here. Sony is banking on players still wanting that next generation feeling from their next offering, and it shows. The PlayStation 5 is the most radical departure from PlayStation's design ethos. From the console to the controller to the software powering everything, every detail about the PlayStation 5 is brand new. Let's start with the console. The PlayStation 5 is a behemoth. At about twice the size of the Xbox Series X, the PlayStation 5 is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, console ever made. The design of the PS5 is likely going to be the most controversial thing about it. The console weighs about the same as the Series X, but due to its increased height, it feels a lot lighter when I pick it up. The hardware isn't as dense, which might lead you to wonder, why is it so big then? I don't have the knowledge to be able to fully answer that question, but Sony claims the PS5's large footprint is due to the large cooling fan. If you've played games on a PS4 Pro, then you probably understand the need for good cooling before I say it, but that console sounded like a jet engine at times. The PS5, on the other hand, is nearly completely silent. The new DualSense controller, however, is likely to be far less divisive. The DualSense, put simply, is the best controller I've ever laid hands on. After just a couple of weeks with the controller, I want to play everything with it. In the past, I've considered Nintendo to be the king of innovation in the way we interact with our games, but the PS5 has topped them here. The DualSense is packed with features. Haptics replace traditional rumble motors. There's a built-in microphone and speaker, meaning you can voice chat and multiplayer without a headset. The DualShock 4's touchpad is retained, and the new adaptive triggers, which can change their resistance on the fly, are incredible. In my hands, the DualSense feels like a hybrid of a DualShock and the Switch Pro controller. It's wider than the DualShock 4, but still extremely comfortable. For those of you that didn't love the DualShock 4's LED bar, it's essentially gone on the PS5's new controller, replaced instead by a thin LED strip framing the DualSense's touchpad. The haptic feedback in the DualSense feels like a refined version of the Switch's HD rumble feature. When I played Astro's Playroom on the PS5, there's a moment when a ton of small bots jump into the controller, and I could feel every little bot landing inside. When I ran along sand in cooling springs, I could feel Astro's feet touching the beach, and it actually felt different than when I ran across metal surfaces. It was wild! Every time I'd punch an enemy or an explosion would happen near Astro, I'd feel subtle vibrations that added a tactile feeling to the gameplay that's hard to put into words properly, but impossible not to be impressed by once you feel it. Haptics are cool, but the DualSense's adaptive triggers are mind-blowing. Every coin you collect in Astro's Playroom allows you to purchase items from a toy capsule machine. When you buy a capsule from the machine, you use the L2 trigger to pull the handle, and with the R2 trigger, you'll crush the capsule to reveal the toy inside. I was awestruck by the amount of fight these triggers have in them. As I pushed down on the trigger, I felt the resistance increase until the amount of effort I used was simply not enough to continue pushing the trigger down. On screen, I could see my hand had a firm grasp on the capsule, and I needed to just apply more force to shatter it. When I pushed down on the trigger even harder, the capsule burst, releasing the toy inside. It was one of the coolest uses of the DualSense's tech I've seen so far, and I sincerely hope that other developers are going to make this a focal point in their games, because it's one of my favorite things about my new favorite controller. Finally, there's the PlayStation 5's user interface, which finally does away with the cross-media bar which was first introduced in the Japan-only PSX. The PS5's interface is a breath of fresh air. Of all the modern consoles, only PS5 has an interface tuned for 4K and HDR. It's crisp, clear, and easy to navigate. When you boot up the PS5, you're greeted with a simple, easy-to-understand menu. The first handful of games or apps you've recently used are displayed as large icons across the top of the screen. There's also the Explore icon, which will show you what streams are available to watch on PSN, along with some news stories, and the PlayStation Store is selectable from the home screen as well, but the last game you played is the default icon selected. There's also a media tab, but I haven't been able to explore that as my review unit is running as yet in complete firmware. From the get-go, it's clear the PS5 user interface is focused on getting you into the games you want to play quickly. It feels like a modern version of the Switch interface, albeit with some added features. That's to say the PS5's menus are surprisingly spartan when compared to the PS4. There are no themes or ways to change the system's sounds or visuals when not in a game. It's very to the point, presenting you with the information you need to get playing and little else. I like it a lot. Wherever you're at, you can tap the home button on the DualSense to bring up a quick menu. When you do this, big, context-sensitive cards will appear. 
If you're in a game, these cards will show you your recent captures for that game or trophies you can unlock. Beneath the cards, there's a host of useful functions available. You can look at your notifications, check on a game download, start a party, adjust your microphone volume, just to name a few things. And if you find that you didn't like the options available or the way they're ordered, the PS5's quick menu is customizable, though I never felt the need to change anything around for myself yet. As of this writing, I've not played a ton of games on my PlayStation 5. I've finished both Astro's Playroom and Spider-Man Miles Morales, but those are the only games I've played outside of a handful of PS4 titles. The good news is that both Astro's Playroom and Miles Morales are fantastic launch titles, but like the Xbox Series X which I reviewed yesterday, there isn't a ton of exclusive content available for the PS5 yet. Rather than completely new experiences, the vast majority of the PS5's launch lineup will be comprised of last-gen games with modest upgrades. Games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Watch Dogs Legion are coming, but I haven't seen how they differ from their current-gen counterparts yet myself. Miles Morales is another game that has a current-generation version on the way, and I have to say the PS5 makes an incredible difference here. On PlayStation 5, Miles Morales has nearly zero load times. The moment you hit continue, you're dropped into the game immediately. It's jaw-droppingly fast. Even after having played through the game and beaten it, I'm still floored by just how quickly fast travel moves or how fast the game loads. It seems impossible, but it's happening. On top of that, the game looks amazing. Ray tracing adds an incredible amount of visual detail to what was already a fantastic looking game, and if for some reason you'd rather turn it off, the game offers a PS5 exclusive performance mode that shoots the game to 60 frames per second. I preferred visual fidelity in this case, but regardless of the mode you choose, there's certainly a feeling that this wouldn't have been possible on the previous generation of hardware. The PS5 may not have a huge library available at launch, but it does an excellent job communicating its value. The games that I've played are easy to consider as next-gen showcases, even if they have a current generation version available. As a duo, Astro's Playroom and Miles Morales showcase the PS5's new controller and horsepower remarkably well. I'm confident Demon's Souls will be a similarly impressive showing when we get to see it closer to launch. The PS4 games I played worked incredibly well on PS5 too. If you want to use some of your precious SSD space, pretty much any PS4 game will load much faster on the PS5, but even if you opt to run those games from a USB drive, some may see improvements on the newer hardware. Ghost of Tsushima, for instance, runs at a locked 60 frames per second on PlayStation 5, up from just 30 on PlayStation 4. Of course, these patches will come on a game-by-game -game basis, so there's no telling what the future holds. But for now, I'm content just to be able to play my PS4 collection of games on my PS5. I own about 300 digital PS4 games, and with few exceptions, they work on my PS5 without issue. At one point, I even had PT working on my PS5, though a firmware update during the review period appears to have removed support for the legendary demo. After having spent a couple of weeks playing the PlayStation 5 in the comfort of my own home, I can say that Sony took the right approach this generation. The tried and tested model of console generations eschewing the old in favor of the new has once again worked. The PlayStation 5 is everything I could want in a next generation console, even if the library isn't quite there yet. I'm confident that we'll see more exclusives coming to PS5 in the next few months, and the games that are there are enough to keep me entertained until those do arrive. Along with my admittedly huge backlog of PS4 games, most of which work flawlessly on my new console. I love the PlayStation 5. It's rare that a new generation console can replace the previous one in my lineup, but with its compatibility with the previous generation, I really don't feel the need to hold on to my PS4, especially considering the games run just as well as, if not better than they did, on the PS4. The DualSense controller, vastly more intuitive UI, improved sharing and capture features, and dramatically improved visual fidelity in games give me the feeling that PlayStation 5 will be the console I turn to the most for my entertainment for the foreseeable future. That wraps up my review of the PlayStation 5. Thanks again to PlayStation for providing a console for this review, and as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to Game Explain for much more on the PlayStation 5 and all other things gaming as well. Ring that notification bell to be the first to know when a new video goes up, and I'll see you next time.